The Clothing Motif in King Lear. This article was written by Thelma Nelson Greenfield. Her thesis is that the contrast between being clothed and unclothed in King Lear is used to reinforce the theme of each character. Greenfield's article explains the way characters were dressed in King Lear and how it represents their values in nature. Shakespeare uses visual and verbal images to contrast characters who are clothed in rich garments versus those who are naked or barely clothed. Greenfield examines how nakedness plays a role and how it was portrayed in various eras, such as Biblical and Roman tradition, Medieval and Renaissance era. Through the examination of the views of each era, we can understand what era correlated with Shakespeare's view of clothing the most, using King Lear. Through the examination of the views of clothing in each time period, we can understand what period correlated with Shakespeare's view of clothing in King Lear. Erwin Panofsky was an art historian who devoted part of his studies in iconology. Erwin Panofsky was an art historian who devoted part of his studies in iconology. According to Panofsky, the idea of nudity has a conflicting perception. In earlier art, figures that were draped or undraped can signify either superiority or inferiority. He called this debat. The bat creates a hierarchy based on the symbolic value of nudity. He lists four theological meanings of nakedness that are both favorable and unfavorable. The first one is the natural state of man, like birth. The second one is the lack of earthly possessions, which can be voluntary, as in the apostles. The third meaning of nakedness is of innocence. And the last meaning represents the vices. These beliefs on what nudity symbolized was apparent in each of these eras. The biblical tradition of nakedness was viewed as something bad, such as poverty. Sometimes it was associated with the truth, like the naked truth. In the Middle Ages, there was more mixed emotion of what nudity symbolized. However, in medieval pictorial art, clothing seemed to be superior to nudity. In one picture, undraped figures symbolizing worldly happiness is inferior to another figure representing heavenly life, which is draped. In medieval time, being naked showed signs of lust and absence of ethics, whereas individuals that were socially accepted and deemed important in society were dressed elegantly. In the Renaissance period, nudity became a symbol of truth and presence of virtues, while clothed figures represented vain and worldly possessions. The juxtaposition of draped and undraped figures provides an underlying meaning of what will change according to the time period. So the question is, what symbolic meaning of clothing is in King Lear? The views of clothing explained in the Renaissance period correlated most with the clothing of the characters in King Lear. The Renaissance period ended around the 16th century, and King Lear was written and performed in the 17th century. Thus, Shakespeare takes an old-school approach in terms of what nudity symbolizes in his play. To further examine this, we can look at the characters in King Lear. Granville Barker was an English actor that advised the production of King Lear to portray Oswald as an overdressed and unimportant character. In the play, Oswald has no desire to do what is right or moral. He merely follows his master and does what she says. This is seen when Oswald treats Lear poorly in Act 2 as Goneril's tactic to get Lear to move to her sister Regan. Oswald's garments and actions are what prompt Kent to insult Oswald when he confronts him before Gloucester's castle. Kent's comments state that Oswald's clothing does not represent who he truly is. This is seen when he says, Nature disclaims in thee a tailor made thee. Regan wears a dazzling scarlet gown, thus elegantly clothed, representing her cruelty. Lear states that even though Regan is finely clothed, she is also unclothed. Her partial nudity would be characterized as nudus criminalis, which represents lust. Regan's partial nudity does not represent goodness. It is an exception to the belief that being unclothed represents the virtues. As Lear says, Why nature needs not thou gorgeous wearest, which scarcely keeps thee warm. Regan's partial nudity prepares the audience for a quick and sensual passion for Edmund. The onstage costuming was made effectively 
by the contrast between Regan and Goneril's gowns in comparison to the simplicity of Cordelia's gowns. Through this contrast, Shakespeare can use the motif of clothing to create layered characters. King Lear is the greatest example that can be used to show the imagery and motif of clothing that Shakespeare was attempting to capture. There's a stark contrast to what Lear looked like in the beginning of the play in comparison to the end of the play. In the beginning, King Lear is loved by all, powerful and wealthy. However, as Lear's loss of power furthers, he progressively dishevels, which is heightened during the storm. Poor Tom's nakedness and poverty during the storm inspires Lear to dissociate himself from royalty by becoming more like poor Tom. As he says, Off you legging, come unbutton here. Poor Tom's physical appearance inspires Lear to seek self-knowledge. Lear gains wisdom by pitying and sharing his physical afflictions with poor Tom. By Lear becoming physically bare, he gains self-recognition. Lear discovers that clothing is just a sad attempt to disguise our true, defenseless nature. Even at his death, he tries to strip away his garments as he says, Pray you, undo this button. Lear's circumstance causes him to go mad and further disintegrate his power, which is evident in his clothing. In conclusion, the motif of clothing was realistically fitted into the plot of King Lear by Shakespeare's choice of garments as an indication of point of view and character.